Hey, so uh, I'm going to do another little tutorial. Obviously, it's been a while. Last time, I did something with just like a, a box kind of crouching and jumping up to kind of uh, talk a little bit about um, how animation kind of boils down to these fairly simple processes. Uh, and there, I was talking about just, you know, translation and squash and stretch. Um, I'm going to say today with like the way I like to build secondary motion into characters and the particular way I like to to animate things is to just really exaggerate that stuff like all of my things kind of have a bit of a well slightly hammy theatrical quality to them to be honest um, so yeah <coughs> you know the metaphor last time was this you know this rectangle is a person um, and here it's this kind of the same thing, right? Like you could kind of see this as being the spine or the torso, and this being the character's head. Or um, I mean, really, this you know, this is a character's tail, or this could be um, you know, a waiter holding a tray of drinks, or or anything that would require secondary motion, basically. Um, but yeah, so I like to build things up in layers rather than going pose to pose and saying okay well at frame 7 is going to be like this and at frame you know 14 it'll have caught up into more of this kind of shape and blah 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 um, and then go and sort of do your in-betweens I like to kind of start with the base let's say this would be the hips or you know the hips and the legs or you know whatever is the, the root and just kind of do the whole thing um, all at once. So I'm going to just give him a really sudden stop like this. Let's see if that. And then I'm just going to key his rotation <coughs> and make him slowly swing down. A big kind of pendulum motion like this. So it goes like this, and then go by the other way. Alright, this just takes a tiny bit of concentration. <laughs> uh, as I've discussed previously, I, I generally like to animate on twos and just kind of go straight ahead and just kind of eyeball things. I just hate the curve editor, I hate everything about it. So. <coughs> Yeah, so here we go, we have our motion. <coughs> we have this kind of exaggerated, contrasty swing. Um, and essentially, you know, let's say this wasn't just a kind of silly 15 second uh, little box animation, but, you know, you'd spent half an hour doing your run cycle or your, um, you know, character jumping off a bridge or whatever. You know, this is the point in a full animation where I would have done you know, the hips and the legs and the footfalls and this kind of thing. And then I'd basically be just building a performance for the torso and the spine and on the head and everything, just kind of around that. Because I know that the foundation is just solid and done. So it's almost just kind of colouring in the lines at that point and, you know, you sort of know what you're getting. Um, <coughs> so then I would sort of take the next bit that's affected by the primary action. So this would be the torso, or this would be the next bone in his tail or whatever. Um, and all I'm really doing on any given frame is reacting to the previous uh, few frames. So in this instance, all I really care about is just looking, you know, what is the hip doing? And physically, you know, where does that leave my you know, current bone? So there's this kind of drag, and then there's this overcompensation and then sort of a settle back to equilibrium. Um, and the great thing about uh, animating this way is 
<coughs> it's just really easy, you know. It makes, you know, when I was first learning to animate, doing this kind of stuff was really difficult, and I I didn't really understand um, how you got smooth performances um, and smooth motion. Um, and I guess I'm just a naturally lazy person, and eventually I kind of worked out that this is sort of the simplest way for me personally to do it, where instead of having to keep, you know, if you've got your humanoid character, hang on, that looks really bad, <laughs> if you've got your humanoid character with, um, you know, 60 bones, you know, you can't keep all of that in your head all at one time, it's just impossible. So if you only have to worry about getting one thing right at a time, yeah, here we go. Then it just keeps, <coughs> you know, whatever the, um, it's just less plates spinning at once, pretty much. So now we just do the same thing with the next bone. All we care about is the previous few moments and the previous bone. Uh, we've basically got a cool performance. So, yeah, here we go. <coughs> so let's just watch the whole thing. Yeah, and we've got a kind of a sort of a, a run here, and then the character stopping and catching himself. He sort of, you know, the guy's in his run cycle, and then he now goes to idle. Oof, stop myself. My chest goes forwards, then pulls back, my head reacts to that. And then, you know, the floor underneath this character uh, just got whisked from under him, and now his, you know, whatever, <coughs> his shoes are stapled to the wall or something, and he's swinging, oh fuck, and catches himself, swing, swing, saddle. That's actually slightly unnatural. I'd go a little bit different there. There we go. Um, <clears throat> and uh, this kind of layering approach to things, you know, it can kind of apply to everything you do to that character, right? Like if we say, um, okay, well now let's do something where we're going to get a kind of cartoonish squash and stretch thing. Again, you just kind of take what you've already got and just do a bit more to it. So now <coughs> we have our main squash and stretch performance on the, the legs and hips or whatever this is. Um, and everything else, you know, all of the work you did to to uh, to make that nice is just going to um, ricochet, you know, across all of the other parts of the of the animation. So like at this point, I'm now just completely on autopilot. Like, okay, this bone gets dragged down, which stretches this bone, right? Because if you look at the like the horizontal kind of waterline of this bone here at the top of the screen, all we're really doing is saying, well, as this gets dragged down, it kind of stays roughly where it was, and then it catches up to itself. So this compensates, and then when it gets pushed up, that squashes it down. Again, you're kind of keeping that that sort of steady uh, line there, and then overcompensates, squash back down again, pushed up, and so, um, you know, and so now we've got that that sort of nice little <coughs> that extra wrinkle on top of the performance, like whoa, catching myself, Oof. and you do the exact same thing this. Here we go. Pull that up. Yeah. And this might be a slightly exaggerated, but but basically you've got the whole thing there. Um, and you can do all sorts of stuff. But um, let me see how I'm doing for time. Ten minutes. <coughs> Um, so anyway, I'm going to leave that uh, there for a second, see if I stick something else on top of this. But um, generally, I really like to build animations in layers, as demonstrated just then. So yeah, enjoy. Goodbye.